my name is Troy Galloway. I'm the owner of Galloway Building Services. And I'm really tickled that you folks have taken your time to watch this video. Because what I wanted to share with you is the difference of what we look for in a historical home, which is an old home. This old home we're looking at here today is over 120 years old. It's just so amazing. All the memories, all the parties, and all the laughter, and all the tears that was shed in this house. But there's a big difference on what we look at when we actually have an historical home versus a modern day home. It's because we just have different building practices and they can't be held to the same standards as what was when they was built back in 120 some years. And you just don't learn how to do this by becoming an inspector. They don't teach any classes on historical buildings. I know it because I'm, a, I'm an engineer, building engineer, but also because I've actually been a builder and a remodeler. So I've had to know the differences. And so what we're gonna to do today is share with you some of the differences and what to look for and why historical homes, what the, they're different and their applications, why some things appear to be a problem when they're really just old age. Actually, just a real quick history on this particular house, this home was built as a summer home for some rich folks out of the city. So they'd come out here to the country during the summertime to stay cool because they didn't have air conditioning or anything in them days. So they'd come out here with the family and this is where they lived during the summertime. So anyway, come enjoy us and you'll enjoy this just as much as we do. Thanks folks. You know, naturally it's very important that we have a good solid foundation, but we got a stone and mortar foundation. These are, they literally just quarried this stone locally. That's what's so cool about it. This is local material. And then of course, St. Louis was one of the major brick building companies, or, or cities in the United States. Actually, we had several brick companies. And so we have a lot of great brick. And that's why, you know, the, the, we have three different styles of brick on here. Uh, we got a, this, this white, like a glaze up here. Then you got the surrounding over here. And then you got this here. Now they've added this on here. This is something we want to be looking for because this is an older home and this electricity, well, they had electricity back in that, in that days, but it really wasn't like this, you know, then they definitely didn't have outlets like this. And most of all, what we had was gas lighting in these older homes. So when we go in, we'll kind of look around to see if we see any old gas light fixtures uh, in there. But gas lighting was really popular in the early uh, 1900s and 1800s. But so we want to make sure our outlets and stuff are all safe. Those are some of the things we want to be looking for. Uh, we'll kind of walk around here. If you see these gutters, these are old copper gutters. Now I better not say that too loud, they won't be here the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but a sincerity, uh, these old gutters. So we want to make sure our gutters are in good sound shape. Just goes to show how many, these gutters are over a hundred years old and they're still working. Isn't that amazing? But now, now they put it down here in a piece of plastic down here at the bottom. But these are old gutters, copper gutters. We want to make sure our gutters are taken care of. And then if you look up into our soffit here, what we have is a, a old hidden gutters. So you don't see the gutters like you're hanging off the side of the building. They literally are inside uh, up in the roof section. And uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was very big into hidden gutters. He was a famous architect. Uh, but, oh, not necessarily around this time, but right about this time. This is not the original uh, uh, concrete. It's because of the type of uh, 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 rock that's inside of it. Uh, uh, aggregate is what we call it. And you, it probably was like this right here. You can see this old here going out to the old kitchen out here. So this was a little bit older. This is also something we want to be looking at is right behind, right over here on our electric is all this kind of stuff. Now this has all been added on since the house was built. Now the original house, that's one thing to look at. But what we really want to make sure is, is that the older homes retrofitted has been done right. There wasn't even any codes back in these days. So we want to make sure that these are up to code, but more important, well, in my world, more importantly than just up to code, safe. Nobody's going to get electrocuted. You touch this when that power's on, you're going to get lit up. It's going to, it's going to hurt real bad. <laughs> so let's go on in. We'll go back on in here. I just wanted to share a little bit with this. 
right, so we are in the kitchen area. Now, this was the original kitchen. And, of course, they've added the cabinets, and they've redone the sink and everything over here. And uh, so that's all been... Now, they used to have a old well house in here that used to have the water. It wasn't city water like now. So they've readjusted some of the plumbing here. Uh, but I, I believe the sink's probably always been there because of where the bathroom is upstairs. We're going to get up in the bathroom. You're going to love it. It is really, really cool. It's actually got some of the, got the original fixtures. But what we used to have is a stove over here, and I can tell where the stove is at because you see this right here, this indentation. This is where it used to be plugged in at. And you can kind of see right in here where they probably had that going into here too, uh, the stovepipe. But these are things we want to be looking at. And this has all been pretty much redone. So, but, uh, you know, we want to make sure that there again, we want to make sure that any retrofits has also been taken to the place that they're done safe and right. So we'll just wander on in through here. They're really cool. These are the original floors. And uh, these, are a these are not oak floors, which they are a hardwood, but I'm not exactly. It's hard to tell what test they've been stripped. But uh, the, all the wood in here, all the materials that we have, are pretty much all local. When we get down to the basement, we'll talk more about that. So, well, now let's head on back upstairs. Well, I just want to take you, I just got to take you up there and take, show you the kit the bathroom. It's really cool. The old pocket doors. Now, this door's been kind of replaced, but this is really popular at this time was these old pocket doors. Amazingly enough, everybody has a pocket door today. We complain about them. It's not the quality of, it's not really the pocket door is the problem, it's the quality of the hardware. So when you do put a new pocket door in, in a new home or an older home, you want to make sure you get good hardware. Don't get the cheap stuff, you'll only regret it. All right, so look at this old stairwell. There's no way would this ever, ever pass code today, but it's all grandfathered in. So when we do an inspection like this, we recognize that it's not code compliant for today, but it is grandfathered in. And look at this, isn't that really nice? So we're going to wander up here. Just imagine how many parties and, and how many birthdays, how many you know, the times that people have been out here and, and, and having a great summer time and enjoying their life out there. You know, when I go through these old homes like this, I think about all of the wonderful memories that are attached to the home. Uh, it's really awesome. Oh, well, we come into here, and this is something that way we want to be looking at because on our older homes, we always have the, uh, uh, well, the old materials, you know, they start sagging. When we get down to the basement, I'm going to show you a perfect example of that. But we come down here, but look here, you see how it's got a little swell in here. But I've already walked through here, so I know it's good and safer. I wouldn't be wandering in here today. But you see also, too, you can see I got this, the flooring and the walls and the ceiling and where it's been leaking and the plaster, the original plaster starting to come off. Now in this plaster, we do have asbestos. We do have lead. So these are definitely, uh, uh, as before we started actually doing the filming here, I wanted to share, make sure we don't walk through this contaminated area and take it home. Just that dust off of your shoes can actually harm your, you know, your small ones. So like your animals, your, your family, your children. But how I could tell that we actually, this floor, so even if you didn't have an eye for this to see whether or not the floor is swell, there's little tell, tell signs that tells me that I can see it myself because I've been doing this for so many years. But say if you came through here and you've never been in, had any construction experience, we see how right through here on my floor, how we got it, so you can see the stains. Well, this is because it's been leaking coming in here and it just literally has, you can see the, the, the footprint, you might say, of the old stains in here. Isn't that cool? And, of course, all this electric's been redone over the years and added to it. And, uh, but that's what, these are some of the things that we're looking for on historical homes that separates it. Now, I want to show you this, right, this little section right down in here. This is my return air. And what they've done here is that, you know, you can see the old plaster wall in here. And you can see all the dirt and grime and such in there. Now, I always recommend, especially, well, any home anymore, uh, with now the COVID and such as we've been experiencing, but the ductwork. 
So especially with plaster, it's not smooth on the inside, so naturally dust and debris is going to catch that and get hung up in that plaster mix. But I wanted to share that with you. And then look at our old scuttle hole here. Now this here on my attic fan, this has been added too, but this is how the scuttle hole used to be. That's actually how we get up into the attic. We're not going to get up in the attic today, uh, but uh, because there's just not, a, just not enough room for me and the cameraman all up <laughs> there at the same time. But that's our soap scuttle hole. And let's walk into our bathroom. And uh, now they might have converted this over. I imagine this has probably been converted from gas to electric because, you know, back in the day of this house was built, they probably didn't even have much of electric to speak of. But look at this. But look at my tub. Oh, look at that. I mean, this is an old claw foot tub. This is probably the original bathtub. Now, one thing we are looking for is that on the flooring and on my old cement coated cement set tile this has all been you know this, this stuff's forever it's really really difficult to ever replace it or get into it and once again think about your hazardous waste but then i want to share with you over here look at this sink look at that isn't that cool and here's the old stopper kind of well what's left of it and uh, <laughs> Same with the stopper here on this tub here. And these are things we want to look at, you know? I mean, they're no longer working. You see that right inside of there, the rust going on on my plumbing. So right now we don't have any water in the home, so I'm imagining we have some water leakage. But these are the little things like this we want to be watching for, making sure that when we do turn our water on, and I could just imagine that's probably got some leaks going on in that. But let's head on down to the basement. Watch your feet, watch your steps as we go down through here. Naturally, nobody really believed in handrails back in these days. Now here's the old handrail. This is what they used to be like. So what I want to share with you down here is the old, the, the roof is important, but so is, so is my basement and my foundation and my, my, all my uh, joists. So you can see you can see our you can see what we look like on the inside of our stone and mortar foundation, and now look at our boards. These are full two by four boards, and these are actually have been milled right out here in St. Louis, probably right out here in this part of town, back when they built this house, because you know transportation of all the all the lumber. Now it's a full masonry home, but still being full masonry, we still had a lot of wood involved. And, but look at this here, you know, it says, and it's all Douglas fir, which was really popular at the time, uh, but it has a tendency, Douglas fir, this is something you want to watch for, Douglas fir has a tendency to crack when it gets older. And honestly, truthfully, if an inspector doesn't find any cracked wood on our, on our, our joist, floor joist, then they're probably missing something. So that's something to be watching for. Now we see some of that on this here, but look at that. And you can see the old water stains and such built in, it's happened. And look at my, oh, look at my floor in here. Under that old hardwood, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that something? And of course, I don't, you know, we've had some leaks in here. We can see we've had a lot of leaks over the years, but you know, what, what don't leak after 120 some years, you know? Then we'll come into here. I wanna share with you here um, now you can see we do have some broken joists here, perfect example, and actually it's even kind of deteriorated. Uh, but what we have is we've had to put in, we had a big old crack right on along through this joist right here, but they've had to come in here to put in this steel beam. Now the steel beam is something that's been added to the job since, they, since they've been in here because this expansive length of this timber, it was great at the time. But like I said upstairs, it literally starts to sag. So what they've done is they've put this steel beam in. Now what they, you know, this is why we're trying to not just look at the old, what we're all, most important, I, I feel too, is again, like I was saying earlier, we wanna make sure that what they've done, fixing it is done right. And it's the, it's the retrofits that scare us the most. And look at this right here. So you can see I got this nice steel beam and, 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 and we got adequate uh, posts right here, but they're not attached. And they need to be attached because this could literally be knocked out if somebody was to run into it. I reckon you gotta run into it pretty hard. 
But as an engineer, I have to call this because this is a structural issue and it's also not attached to the floor. We want it attached to the floor and we want it attached to our beam. I think we should sister them and do the beam, but it's a twofold thing. Now look over here on this old steel, our main support. Now this was the original. This literally was just cut from a local tree. Now that's a piece of oak. That is not Douglas fir, and the reason I can tell is because of the texture of the material, and uh, which we used to use, always used oak. Well, I can't say always. We did what we had, or used what we had, but we we used oak on our beams so as that for, for structural strength. But because of the length of time, it too sagged, and it literally has had to put this post in. Once again, this post has not been put in correctly. So it needs to be secured. This is absolutely not to code. It's absolutely not safe for many reasons. For one, you know, that right there ought to be enough right there. So we want to make sure that that is taken care of too. So when, like I said, we want to make sure that the house is the old is good and the new is good and everything in between is done right and safe. Let's walk over to this wall over here because look how cool this old wall is. Can you, you know, the old masons back in them days, uh, not, not Freemasons, Stonemasons. Uh, isn't that awesome? Look at that. Is it, they, they literally come out here and probably dug this basement out by hand and did all of this all by hand. You know, they, they, and, and probably all this wood's been cut by handsaw. All of the holes drilled with a regular, probably with a bracing bit. Anyway, like I said, for a construction nerd, I just love this stuff. I, I just think it's just so interesting. But these are some of the things we want to be looking at when we do an historical home inspection. We want to look at, once again, we want to look at the old, make sure it's safe. We want to look at the new, make sure it's done right. And we want to make sure that everything in between the retrofit is safe and still compliant and going to last us for another 120 years. This home here, I'll be long gone and this video will still be here and this, and this house will still be here. Just don't make them like this anymore. We just can't afford it. <laughs> Thank you folks for watching my video. I think, I hope this has been interesting. I hope that you learned something and I hope that when you go to get you an historical home, and I do encourage it because there's so much fun. I, I think about these things before you actually uh, spend your money. Make sure it's not a money pit, but just a beautiful thing that you and your wife or your family can get into. And, and build memories right along with the rest of the families that's lived here for the last 120 years. Thank you, folks.